Hey guys, my name's Chris. Welcome to my channel. Here, we're going to explore all things related to astrophotography using a small wedge-mounted SCT, like the one behind me. Say hello, Wedgie. Call me little one more time. Tonight, I have a feeling, is going to be a good night. We're going to try to capture M81 and M82 together in the same field of view. I tried to capture these two galaxies a few days ago. That went horribly wrong. If you'd like to see why, I'll leave a link to the video. But tonight, the skies are clear, the wind is down, the scope is good to go. Join me for some astrophotography fun as we capture these two really cool galaxies. It is uh, just after sunset. Uh, we can see some stars already peeking through. I'm gonna take this as an opportunity to uh, double check my guiding and uh, get my uh, scope set up. I know the last thing that this mount needs is more weight. However, uh, the other night when I had to shift this counterweight forward, uh, it changed the center of gravity of the whole scope. So now I am front heavy. Uh, I need to rig something up to add a little bit of weight to the back to uh, offset that, uh, that front loading. Otherwise, my guiding is going to be off. And I did have some trouble with guiding last night when reviewing the PhD2 guiding logs. I'm hoping that adding some additional uh, ballast to the back is going to help with that. I'm thinking one of these wrenches would probably work pretty well to counterbalance the scope. It's not pretty. We are centered on the nebula. The image is coming through the Nikon as well. Let's verify our drift alignment. I had to make two very quick adjustments but my guiding, my drifting seems to be pretty good. Uh, this is now on the altitude side. Uh, the side is, the altitude is very difficult to dial in because it assumes that your right ascension is already correct. So uh, I think we are ready to get going. I'm going to test my guiding by running against M48 for a few minutes. So I have slewn my telescope over to M48. Once again, uh, we are impeded by a house. I can see it drifting into the field of view right here, offsetting my guiding. Uh, I did manage to take one photo before the house came in and my guiding was doing all right at the time. So I'm going to pan over to M81 and get going. Oh, that is good. I'm gonna try to shift this over a little bit. Just nudge it up there. give ourselves a little bit more room for that cigar galaxy. Yeah, I like that. Let's, uh, let's start. So I'm going to enable my guiding. We have multi-star guiding going. There are my wide shots going. 
I figure we've got a good three hours before M81 and M82 disappear behind the house. And then over here, I did my uh, focus and now I've got my five hour plan going. I can stop that later on when we lose visibility. Brief update, uh, it is, oh, I don't know, somewhere north of 1 a.m. And I've been trying to figure out what the heck was wrong with my guiding. It looks like we've got quite the breeze that has picked up. I came out a little bit earlier and I took the uh, dew hood off the scope. The dew hood is basically a giant sail and mine is constructed out of uh, foam material, which really makes it catch the wind. So all in all, uh, got about three hours worth of data on M81 and M82. Hey everybody, uh, this is just a quick update. Uh, I am taking another pass at M81 and M82. Uh, I had a pretty good night a few nights ago where I caught a couple of hours worth of data on both of those galaxies. And uh, I'm hoping to do a little bit more tonight. And uh, as an added bonus, I'm gonna do something I don't usually do, which is varying up my uh, gain. So I've been shooting at gain 120, which uh, as I understand it gives the biggest uh, well. Uh, to the ASI 294 MC Pro camera, meaning I get the most depth of uh, color resolution uh, and uh, signal resolution, rather. Uh, and uh, given that I'm shooting in a Bortle 8 sky, uh, definitely in the direction that M81 and M82 are, I'm shooting towards the city lights. Um, I, I don't know if uh, having that full well is doing me much good. I'm actually interested to see what uh, a higher gain setting is going to give me um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll try combining the different gain settings for the different uh, gain pictures uh, to produce a composite that will uh, give me some some more details around the harder to uh, harder to see areas or harder to expose areas while getting uh, some better details out of the core of the galaxies with a lower uh, gain setting so I've got an airplane passing overhead I'm gonna end this video and hopefully this night goes as well as the previous night did and not like the terrible, horrible, no good, very, not, very bad night I had a few nights ago that I recently posted. So wish me luck and I'll see you on the other side. Hey everybody. So I had a couple of successful nights uh, after the two horrible nights I previously recorded and posted as part of that uh, three video series on when uh, things go wrong, the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad night, day, and, and other night videos. Uh, this time around, things went much better. I, I had a couple of stumbling blocks like uh, everyone does, but uh, I ended up with um, 84 exposures that I could use over the course of two days. So uh, pretty excited that I had 84 uh, exposures to work with and uh, that, uh, that amounts to uh, just over four hours of, of data, which it really isn't that much on M81 and M82. They deserve much more, uh, but it is what's, what I have to work with. Um, I'm gonna try these again next year uh, when they are higher up in the sky and further to, uh, uh, to the east so that uh, I don't have to worry about the house as I, I track them all night with the wedge. Uh, but uh, it's the tail end of galaxy season, so I, I really wanted to get these two in. Anyway, long story short, uh, I have uh, a, a TIFF file generated by Deep Sky Stacker out of those 84 frames. Uh, out of those 84 frames, there were a whole number that were 120 gain, and then some that I had shot at 240 gain, uh, and then combined them together. And this is the resulting TIFF file. So it doesn't look like a heck of a lot, as usual, uh, without some stretching. So what I wanted to do, uh, I've already 
done a first round of these, so I'm just going to quickly redo it for the sake of this video, uh, for um, just to, to show the process, uh, because it is very uh, very useful. It took me a while to figure it out with uh, the help of watching uh, some great videos from from the likes of Nebula Photos. So we're going to take those. Uh, we're going to take that TIFF file, and we're going to drop it into Cyril. And in Cyril, we're going to do some basic stretches, and we're going to remove the background, and we're going to separate the stars. So very cool. In Cyril, you can kind of preview uh, what a um, stretch of the data might look like. So that doesn't look like a heck of a lot, even with the, the automatic stretching here. So I'm going to revert this back to linear, and I'm going to uh, stretch it by hand. And the way I do that is going up to this generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation. And here I'm going to grab a portion of the image that has a dark sky. I'm going to set my symmetry point, and then I'm going to stretch a little bit. Uh, that's too much. I'm going to stretch a little bit to uh, just bring out a little of a little bit of the uh, uh, signal that that may have been hidden within that uh, that dark area. So I'm going to apply this, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, a sample of this here galaxy, so M81 uh, Bode's Nebula uh, or Bode's Galaxy. Uh, I'm going to sample that, and now I'm going to do a bit more of a stretch. Just a little bit at a time here. And now we're seeing some more of the galaxy coming through. I'm going to apply this. And again, I'm going to take some of this faint area here. And once again, I'm going to set the symmetry point sampling that spot. And just a little bit at a time. There we go. See, that's oversampled right now, or over uh, stretched. So it's kind of a fine line of getting just to the right point. All right, a little bit more, and uh, one more. Let's do it right here. Let's grab a sample of this. And uh, let's just bring that up a little bit. I find Cyril does this much better than, than GIMP uh, in that um, to do this with GIMP, you would have to go into curves and sample each part of the curve. Um, and I, I was never able in GIMP to, to get the uh, smoothness that, that Cyril was doing. So the uh, it it just deals with uh, the the portions of the signal higher and lower than than the point the symmetry point that you've picked a little bit better. Uh, so once we've done this, I've actually gone through this a couple of times, and I'm going to show a couple of samples. And what I do with um, with Cyril is I actually go through and I take a few different spots. So I, I set the the curve to a couple of different spots and then I remove the background and then for each of those I remove the stars as well. So I have uh, four or five different points uh, with uh, which highlight different portions of the galaxy or galaxies in this case and then from that uh, I extract the background so that the background is smoothed out and then from that I extract out the stars so that I have both the stars and the background separately. So uh, what we would do here uh, at this point is, uh, is do the background extraction. So going to processing and then background extraction. I'll just do this quickly. I'm going to set the tolerance up high. Uh, generate my grid. Compute the background. I may have overstretched it in this respect. Let me tone down on the smoothing. That's a little bit better. Tone down a bit more. There we go. Apply. So now we have a, kind of a balanced picture with a lot of the background removed. And at this point, um, 
I could take out some of the green noise. Uh, I seem to be getting a lot of green noise in my uh, pictures, so I'm going to remove that, which really just replaces the green noise with uh, a more grayish uh, tone, which is fine. That's a little bit easier to deal with. Uh, and then finally, I would go into uh, my star processing, and I would do a Starnet star removal. I've installed Starnet, uh, and I've integrated it with uh, Cyril. So, and again, for that, have a look at uh, Nebula Photo's great video on this. Uh, so, at the end of this process, uh, I end up with uh, four or five different versions of uh, the galaxies with stars and without stars with the background removed. And then I would import those into uh, GIMP. So let's do that. So I'm going to go into GIMP. I'm going to open as layers. And let me go find my files. And I'm going to grab these ones. Actually, I don't need all of those. Um, I need... Well, maybe I do. Okay, I'm going to grab all of them. And we'll sort them out after. Got a little pop-up that uh, comes up as to whether or not I want to convert the image to the built-in sRGB color profile. I'm just keeping the profile. Right, so here they are, um, kind of working backwards. This is the highest stretched, this down here is the lowest stretched. So working backwards from here, right, this was the lowest amount of stretching. Here's that same photo with the, or picture with the background, uh, or rather the stars removed. And then here's the next stretch, oops, next stretch with the uh, stars removed. And then a final stretch with the stars removed. So kind of a cool thing to do here. Um, I like to keep the stars from one of the earlier stretches so that they don't oversaturate. I'm not very good at this, uh, but uh, that's, um, you know, for now, that's that's kind of the, the processing that I do until I figure out a better way to do this. But what I do do is I grab the, um, around the second or third stretch, so I have some definition to the stars, and, and I do grab some of the stars that are fainter. And then I grab the... Um, layer that doesn't have stars and I subtract the two. So here we go, we're going to subtract the two layers. There it is, subtract. So here we go, I'm going to subtract the two layers and I'm left with stars. From here I'm going to click on uh, right click, I'm going to click on create new layer from visible and this is now my star layer. Now I can combine different versions of uh, just the galaxies together to produce a output that combines the various um, stretches and then manipulate those images until I'm comfortable with uh, or, or fairly happy, satisfied with, with what I have. So let's just combine a few of these together. So here is uh, one version that is ob obviously oversaturated and then here's one that is uh, under and uh, let's take the both of them and just move oops, and move our uh, opacity to bring them together and then here we're going to do a new from visible once again and here we're going to extract the background a little bit and there's a few ways of doing that um, one way would be uh, we could duplicate this duplicate layer and then from that duplicated layer uh, we could delete our galaxies as they are very bright spots I'm just doing this rough I'm going to grab a, a sample of uh, the color that I want to replace them with so there's that color I'm going to replace the whole galaxy this is for the purpose of doing a, a blur using a Gaussian blur that I'm going to then use to 
kind of do a rough job of, of extracting out the background. So this one here too, I'm going to use the same color. Control A to combine everything together. And now I'm going to blur this all. Going to filters, blur, and Gaussian blur. I'm just going to stretch that way out there. And I'm going to subtract the two layers. So similar to how we got the star quote unquote mask, we're going to subtract the layer. And uh, there we go, subtract. Okay, so that's not great. I mean, obviously, we've got some artifacts there. Uh, I'm going to do new from visible here. I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to I'm going to do one more replace. And this time, I'm going to sample some of this gray space that I've got happening, um, and fill the whole of the background with that that color, and subtract that background from the whole picture. So now we've got the two galaxies again. This is a really quick kind of job of doing this. And now we've got these stars. So with GIMP, what we can do is we can uh, change the mode of this layer. And uh, rather than opacity, I'm going to change the mode of this layer from normal to lighten only. And that's going to combine my star layer with my galaxy layer. So that's a, a really quick couple of stretches in Cyril. Uh, and then uh, a couple of uh, quick... Uh, uh, transformations and, and manipulations in GIMP and we've managed to extract a lot of the, the uh, garbage out of the background and now we've got the two galaxies showing here. Uh, the only part that I didn't show on the video is that it does take uh, a considerable amount of time. You're probably going to spend about a half hour or more depending on the speed of your system to do the serial part of the manipulation as the extraction of the stars can take a bit of time. Uh, but uh, here we are. So uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do one more really cool thing here. Um, I, I came on this, uh, this idea of using the star mask. So here's just the stars and extracting different uh, sizes of stars and then recombining them so that in my final video at the tail end, uh, the stars are, are going to, to move at different rates uh, as uh, to give that moving through space effect with the galaxy in the background. So uh, first time trying it, um, hopefully it works out. Uh, and I'll, I'll post that to the end of the video along with my, my final typical uh, photo. Thank you for watching. Happy end of galaxy season and clear skies.